To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. Our insurance crisis. All of us feel it. All of us fight it. Some of you don't know where to turn because property insurance in Florida simply becoming unaffordable. Our town hall last week, coverage collapsed, looked deeply at the issues and hope for solutions. My colleagues join me now, Shannon Cake and Matt Sesney, an outstanding job leading such a pivotal discussion. Set the table for us before we look at some of the work you did and some of the questions being asked, Shannon. You know, I, I think, Michael, my biggest takeaway is Matt really covers this on a weekly basis most of the times, but as a former consumer investigative reporter, my largest takeaway was how universal this problem is, how many families are struggling with homeowners insurance, and it's whether or not you own a home or not, it, this issue, the coverage collapse, which was the title of our town hall, how it's impacting all of us. If you drive a car, if you have insurance of any kind in the, right. in the state of Florida, this is impacting you. Right, and for me, the town hall was a great opportunity to get a great cross-section of people in our community and find out what they're going through. We hear the stories, but these were actual people who were here. They were uh, making their pleas to uh, state lawmakers who were on the panel. They were asking very intelligent questions to some of the insurance experts. And a few of the people I spoke to afterwards said they really learned something from it, things that they didn't know about uh, homeowners insurance. It was a broadcast that looked unstintingly at the scope of the problem and also looked at real efforts, albeit too slow for many people's mm. taste and pocketbooks, but looked at real solutions in the next half hour. Mm. We're gonna look along with you back at the town hall and take a look at this first segment that really encompasses. Here in Florida, the average homeowner mm. is paying $6,000 for homeowners insurance. The national average, 1700 so in this block we want to tackle what can we do matt yeah what can we do and certainly the florida legislature has tried to do things this year with a special session i want to take it over now to uh, state senator tina polsky and state representative toby overdorf uh, mr overdorf i'll start with you since you're the party in power i know there were reforms put in place but you know one of the big questions i get from a lot of people and even came up in discussion here is why can't government just put a cap on this and put the brakes on what they're charging us? And it's a pretty simple question. When you look at caps, uh, we're, we're looking at taking it out of the free market, if you will. And so I, I would disagree with putting caps on things. Why don't we cap our home values? Why don't we cap uh, what you can, you can make? I, I just don't believe in putting a cap on something because I believe that that is something that then interferes potentially with the free market and therefore bringing other companies in here, which ultimately will hopefully so help to solve the problem. All right, I'll give you a chance to talk about the reforms, right? There were reforms that were passed in that special session this year. Not only in the special session or the second special session mm -hmm. or the session of this last year, but yes, we've been working on insurance and insurance reforms uh, for literally the last couple of years here. Um, under, under Governor DeSantis, we've done a variety of different things with, uh, with the House, with our, our partners in, um, in the Senate as well. Think about this. Uh, in the last several years, in a, a 2021 study showed that 80% of all homeowner litigation happened right here in the state of Florida. 80% mm -hmm. of all. Yet, the state of Florida only had 8% of the homeowner claims. So there has to be um, a give and take here where we need to get a hold of this litigation. And in fact, we did this year with landmark litigation reforms. All right, I want to go to State Senator Tina Polsky. I saw you moving your head. <laughs> but I know Democrats wanted to do more. I'll, I'll give you your chance to speak up now and, and tell us what your side of the aisle was pushing for here. Sure. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. This is the number one issue, as which is why you're having a town hall, and it's the number one issue that we get calls for in our office. Um, so the reforms that uh, you know my colleague have, has talked about were done in a rushed special session in a three-day period of time. This is a massive, complex issue. And there was no testimony, there were no amendments, there was no way to change the bill because it had to match the House and the Senate and the governor was only going to sign this, this uh, legislation. So how can you fix this complex problem in three days? Now, there were some other bills granted, but they did not go to the same length. They also chose 90% to only focus on litigation. I disagree with the study that Rep. Overdorf talked about. That is a flawed study that is not accurate, that 80% of all the litigation has come just from the state of Florida. There have been numerous uh, economists who have shown that to be false. Uh, but why is there a lot of litigation? I'm not going to say there's not, because we are the slowest paying state of insurance claims, uh, I believe, in the country. So if insurance companies did what they should, you don't need to litigate. 
And the other issue I think when we talk about fraud is I don't know what you saw Jimmy Petronas in the package, what he's doing to investigate the, the uh, 12,000 complaints okay. that have come in since January. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned Jimmy Petronas because we're going to go to a quick uh, a quote from Jimmy Petronas. We talked to him. He gave us the luxury of sitting down with him. He was talking about something that homeowners can do to try and save money on their premiums. It's the, the, the revival of the wind mitigation program where the state picks up the tab. He explains how this program works, so take a listen. I had a windstorm mitigation inspection. I paid 150 bucks. Um, they got up in my attic and they certify with greater underwriting notes of what my house is built. Do I have hurricane clips? What type of nails were used on my roof? They document it all. They submit that certified form to the carrier. In my case, my insurance dropped immediately $700. I got a $700 check back from my carrier and then my rates moving forward were $700 cheaper. $700 cheaper. Now, he said he paid $150 for that, but the state's picking up the tab for that right now. Does anybody in the audience, have they heard of that program? Have they tried to use it at all? Yes, you're raising your hand. You've tried to use this program? Stand up, please. What's your first name? Paul. Paul. Tell me about, you've used this program. The wind mitigation inspection. Yeah. They yeah. come, they inspect your home, they determine that your, your house is up to specifications, and then you get a discount with that and certificate. did it work? Did you get a discount? I did. Can you tell us how much? Um, I'm going to say probably about six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. That's yeah. significant, and that that's pretty much. Robert, is that kind of consistent from what you're hearing? Yeah, um, I've seen premiums get cut in half by people that didn't know about the credits before, and if they have all the hurricane credits that are up to the Miami-Dade code, um, mm -hmm. and that that's a big game changer when you're talking to people. All right, we do have the website for that, I believe, for anybody who's interested in uh, signing up for that program. It's uh, mysafeflhome.com. So there it is right there on the screen, mysafeflhome.com, to sign up for those wind mitigation uh, yeah, reports. And I understand the program's pretty popular right now. They qualify for that? That is grant money. Yeah. That does not have to be paid back. Right. Okay. And Shannon? $10,000. Yeah, go ahead. That's $10,000 of grant money. That's for the, for the repairs and for the qualifying issues there. All right, so it goes beyond paying for the inspection. It also, there's grant $10, money for the $10,000 towards the improvement of wind mitigation, yes. All right, fantastic. That's what we Shannon. wanted to tackle with this segment was give you, even if they're very small savings, nuggets, right? A couple of hundred dollars here and there, they can all add up. We have a couple of tips that we gathered along the way. Again, very uh, minimal, uh, but, but again, every little bit helps. Check in once a year, reassess your risk, get to know your insurance agent. This is a relationship, right? Uh, yeah, and, right? And just like any other business. Our next tip, if we could roll to the next one, trim in areas that you may not need, evaluate that policy every single year, make sure you're not, uh, you know, you, you're not carrying too too much coverage in one area and too little in another area. I want to bring uh, back in Greg Buck. Um, you had talked to me coming into to Town Hall, water pipes. You talked to me about a water heater and just keeping your home tidy. How can all of that okay. help drive down your, your premium? Well, thank you, Shannon, again. Uh, one of the things that we always uh, see is, you know, when our inspections come in, and this is a small thing, but if your home is unkempt, the carriers are kind of look at you and they're going to say, well, yeah, you know, it's a kind of a nice home, but this has to be cleaned up. They give you so much time to do it, but it also presents an attitude to them. So they want to make sure that things are in order, tidy. The other things would be your water heater. Um, did you replace it in the last 10 years? Because obviously there are some carriers now that will not even give you coverage unless you've done so. Mm -hmm. The other issues would be your water pipes. Some of the major claims outside of hurricanes have been water damage, and that's either been through uh, vermin chewing through the pipes. Yes. It's also the water pipes being old and outdated and or the glue has come, uh, come apart. Some of those things you can get to, some of them you can't, but you have to at least see what can be done. Greg, thanks. Any other quick tip? We're going to hit yeah. a quick break. Yeah. Matt, Has anybody Any done anything tips? that we haven't? I know everybody's bought roofs, right? Raise your hand if you've, if you've looked at roofs, right? Stand up for a minute, ma'am. You bought a roof, right? I bought, I bought that, a roof. Those yes. aren't cheap. No, they're not. $28,000. Did you end up saving on? on no. You? you did not? No, I have impact one. Didn't save anything. Really? That's right. Robert, what's I the... I think one of the issues there is, uh, you know, uh, the, the wind mitigation credits have certain guidelines that you have to follow. So for example, if you upgraded all your windows but didn't do your doors, you still have a problem. Um, but it, everything has to be to the letter of that form. 
and then you should definitely be getting credits. Back with Shannon and Matt. Yeah. That seemed to be one of the takeaways that there was acknowledgement more needs to be done to look at these wind mitigation credits and right. when people say, hey, I worked to qualify and not get them. Your right. takeaways. Right. Well, uh, first of all, a couple of takeaways. This wind mitigation uh, program, the MySafe Florida Home, uh, the grant money is already just about gone, uh, is the update to that. Mm. This program has gotten so popular sure. that even right on the, the homepage of the website, it tells you that this is a first come, first serve basis for the grant money, and most of it has all been allocated, and they're waiting for the legislature to come back and put more money in the fund, which could be next year, we don't know. There is still money, though, in there to do the inspections. So if you have a relatively new roof and you've got, uh, you know, you've got the impact windows and the other things, uh, it might be worthwhile to get that inspection and try to get those credits. But yeah, that, that, that woman's situation really was baffling. But you know what was intri intriguing to me on that, Matt, was when you interviewed her and then Robert Norberg came right back and said, you have to fill that document out to the letter of the law mm, right. or it'll be kicked back. Right. You know, Michael, for, for me, that was, you know, again, these were little nuggets here and there. The wind mitigation thing was huge. Right. But then just, you know, a suggestion that, you know, get to know your agent a little bit. Make sure he right. understands you. You know, what have you done to improve your home every year that might just give you that little bit. And when you talk to somebody whose yeah. insurance went from $1,500 maybe three or four years ago and now they're paying close to seven, it's not much of a dent, but in this world of huh. you know yeah. every, every bit little bit, yeah. you know. Let me ask you too, the, the, the give and take we heard about uh, litigation and how it's driving up insurance costs. And we're gonna hear more of that in the segment coming up right. in a moment. Mm -hmm. What does the analysis right now suggest? I think uh, Mr. Norberg mentioned that we're seeing, he says, a decline in litigation, which it's right. hoped will eventually help create an arc where prices go down. What's the analysis? Yeah, Citizens suggest? has actually reported a decline in litigation yeah. involving them, which might be the, the initial canary in the coal mine, if you will, that some of this uh, reforms and legislation is starting to stick a little bit. Uh, but there's so many lawsuits that got filed just before that law went into effect that it's going to take time to mm -hmm. kind of get through the system. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, according to the CFO of Florida, we're starting to see some uh, new companies come in. And there are other companies just waiting for November 30th when hurricane season ends to enter the Florida market. Final Jimmy thought this segment. Jimmy Petronas said 18 months. I interviewed uh, Representative Rick Roth mm -hmm. for a story we did during the town. Republican, local Republican. R correct. And, and he had suggested it would be more like five years. And Republicans mm -hmm. are very proud, as you heard uh, in the town hall, of what what was accomplished. Of course, Democrats had a different take. And I'm sure that's not new to you in this show, Michael, right. that they would have a different point of view. But nonetheless, anywhere from 18 months to right. five years to answer your question. And a lot of people said they can't wait that long. Wow. We're going to hear from a woman in the second segment, one of the most poignant moments was an interview you conducted with somebody who said just that. More on the coverage collapse, the problems, the hoped for solutions. We're going to continue. We appreciate both of you mm -hmm. being with us on To The Point today. We'll be back with much more from the town hall and Shannon and Matt next. Promises that help is on the way, but can it come soon enough for financially strapped Floridians staring at sky-high property insurance? More next.